everyone, I am going to be showing something quite personal and this is what I call my ugly sketchbook. Why do I call it my ugly sketchbook? Well, one of the first reasons is because I don't enjoy working in a sketchbook full of scribbles that I'm worried about that I'm going to ruin. So this is purely for me. Um, the stuff that's in here is a mixed bag. They're generally all pencil or graphite sketches and these are just like playing around in the evening or coming up with general ideas. And I call it my ugly sketchbook, particularly in um, workshops. And I think it's a really good way to show people who are particularly at the beginning of their creative journey that not everything that you're going to create is going to be, you know, absolutely beautiful and, you know, looking perfect. So I personally think that everyone should have an ugly sketchbook. I think it just takes that pressure off and it just helps you just have a play. I haven't actually fully done a um, sketchbook tour. So here we go. Um, it is a bit nerve wracking because obviously the whole world if they wanted to, could see this. But I think it's really important to share that, you know, it's all about practice, practice, practice and play. So this is a moleskin sketchbook. Um, it's a hardback A5 size. It's a really good paper. I've spoken about this before in previous sketchbooks. The paper is quite thin so you can see through it, but it's really good quality and I love um, sketching on this. So yeah, you can kind of, you can see through. So it kind of tricks you into thinking that it's, you know, not as high profile as it actually is. You'll have to excuse my voice, we're getting over COVID. Um, okay, so first page. So I'm currently developing my children's book portfolio and I've got a whole array of ideas running through my mind. And so you're gonna see a few little things going on here. I love historical fiction and I love history. So my dream job would be to illustrate a non-fiction history book. You know, I have it in my head that one day I would love to illustrate a fact book about the Victorians or, you know, the Tudors, you know, the dresses and the outfits that they used to wear and the weird and wonderful things that they used to use in their daily life. So. Um, and World War II is a topic that I'm really interested in because of the the story of everyday people. So yeah, so you'll see a few of those going on. So this is a prelim idea sketch of a children's book story that I'm developing. And you'll see it again um, because it is a children's book. It does include children. And so these are just sketches based off photos from Pinterest, based in the 30s and 40s. And this is just playing around with um, characters. Uh, these are, like I said, really quick. They're just me getting some ideas down and you can see how quickly I'm working. And this is just, yeah, like I said, getting ideas down. And then we've got... <laughs> A pig <laughs> it's not a great pig um, and it's weird because this probably doesn't look like much to you guys at all um, but to me I know exactly what I was thinking at this point I know exactly what this is this is a fisherman bringing in some cargo and this is the edge of the harbour um, but you know no one would know that apart from me um, and this is just playing around with a seascape so you can see the hills and the cliffs here and then the sea coming in and just playing around with some trees and some chickens they're not very good chickens these were just made from my imagination <laughs> so yeah not not perfect this is another um, character development um, and the same here as well so yeah just trying to figure things out and the same here, so we've got a sailor, we've got a policeman, we've got a grandma saying goodbye. And then we've got um, this, like, I guess, thumbnail idea that I've got here, so, yeah. 
Okay, then we can see um, more development of this. And I do have like a colour version in, in another sketchbook. Um, but yeah, you can really see me trying to work things out. And this is the one that I loved most because you can see one of the main characters that I've come up with and of course her little teddy. And it was obviously Christmas. Um, so yeah, I was just coming up with like Christmas card ideas. And again, like I said, it's really showing that this is just a bit of everything. Every thought, every idea went into this book and I've also got another one on the go for this exact same thing. <laughs> then we've got a character smelling the turkey. Uh, these are, <laughs> God, I hope they don't see this. Um, I am a member of the Good Ship Illustration. I've done two courses with them. And this is <laughs> Helen, Tanya and Katie. And this is when they were doing a live call and I was like, oh, I'll just try and sketch them. Um, but yeah, <laughs> a bit embarrassing. Um, this is one my daughter did. You'll see some of my own drawings in here, some from my daughter. Um, I take this on the road with me a lot. So if we've got to go anywhere or if we've got any doctor's appointments or whatever, um, I take it with me with a pencil. And yeah, sometimes I let my daughter sketch in here as well. And then we've got Christmas again. This is just a few ideas for a submission for a competition. And this is where I'm trying to develop my practice with working with the same character but doing different things. And then we've got another set of characters. I think there's some more here of them. I think, no. Um, and then we've got a few from, um, this is just from Pinterest, just getting used to drawing people. Um, I've only really been drawing people for about two years now. Um, this is a quick sketch of my daughter while we're at the beach. Um, this was when we were at in the car i think yes it was when we were in the car i don't know whose toe that is maybe it was mine i'm not sure <laughs> but anyway and this is from when we we're at the beach um it's always really awkward drawing people particularly if they know that something's going on and they're kind of looking at you like what are you up to and if people come over generally they're really nice about it and just really inquisitive and they're not there to put you down. So I try not to be awkward, but yeah. And this, <laughs> oh God, this is what I mean. There's, <laughs> not all drawings are good. Um, this actually looks like the baby from Toy Story. Um, so this is my friend's baby and he moved so quickly and I just couldn't get him down. Um, See, so yeah, I was just playing around and I started my other friend, Olivia, and then we ran out of time, so I just put some googly eyes on there just for a bit of a laugh. And that's my daughter's. And then this guy, I've actually drawn him a couple of times. So I got this sketch done in like a minute, if that. And this guy, he had this really hump back and he looked ancient, like so old. Um, and he had this really scruffy dog. This dog ended up getting off the lead and we're all running around chasing after it um but i just loved loved his character so i was like oh my god i need to get him i need to get him down quick um so yeah so that's one i work off quite frequently and you can see there again i'm trying to develop that character and then just a couple of other sketches just working on like reducing the realism which anyone that understands illustration knows that you kind of have to know realism and then be able to bring yourself back um, for it to look good. It's exactly what Quinton Blake did and you know some people might say that his looks just like chicken scratchings and that he's done it really quickly but they don't actually realise the amount of time and effort that went into actually being able to get him to that point of being able to work so quickly and create a character in very very um, significant pen strokes 
So there's a bit of coloured pencil in here. This is a really good sketchbook for coloured pencil as well. You can only just see it. A lady at the local pool. This is my local, our local pool as well. And yeah, just some character development based off photos. Um, some of it is imaginary. I basically create the main image and then I add extra stuff from my imagination. So it's a bit of a mixture of both. <laughs> that poor chicken. He's like, let go of me. What are you doing? Uh, some of these, I haven't had a proper look through some of these sketches in a while, so yeah, it's not a very good cat, is it? Anyway. And again, character development, you can see that I have a real love for people. Um, that is a passion of mine and yeah and yeah I've got a few scribbles in here as well like for my watercolor workshops so I just put ideas down so it really is for anything and again we're back at the beach um, I do live in West Australia so in summer <clears throat> we are out of the house quite a lot at the beach and yeah more more sketch um scribbles uh this is me um it's funny i was just like sat in my studio feeling a bit yeah about myself and i was like one one side of me just like scribbling away furiously at the desk trying to make something of myself and develop my practice and then the other side is all harmony and relaxed and what will be will be um so this makes me laugh I really am drawn to drawing men with beards. I don't know what it is. I really think I like the contrast between the sharpness of their facial features and then the ruggedness and softness of their hair. And these, again, um, are very quick sketches, just trying to work within a time frame. Um, and I enjoy working this like quite quickly. And then this one is just a, um, a sketch from Pinterest, I think. I don't normally draw teeth, but I was actually really happy with hers. And they look very, very similar to how they actually were. Usually when I'm doing teeth, the minute I start doing teeth, they look quite creepy. So, not sure about you guys. And then we've got naked, but naked woman and a baby on the same page. Um, so I take part in live drawing sessions with Draw Brighton. They have an online platform um, and that's basically where you can attend live drawing sessions in many different forms online, uh, which has been really good for developing my um, practice with drawing people. And this is my friend's baby again. Um, yeah, really can't get him down very well. Uh, then we've got like a bit of soft pastel, so the paper is really good at holding that down as well. So yeah, I really I do enjoy moleskin sketchbook for that reason. And then these were like um, you know two minute sketches. So these are all one minute and I really enjoy working fast and I just over overlap and just so I can like loosen loosen myself up and just get into the creative zone. And then we go on to three minutes, three minutes and three minutes. Um, 
And sometimes I'll use these sketches to actually go bigger scale on, um, or on a different piece of paper and work off the, in, the sketch that I did rather than the actual straight image. Um, just so I'm not too heavily influenced for a like, definite likeness. And then these, <laughs> this is, so I did an exhibition and I will probably do a video on that um, in the future. But my friend George, he sat for me and I was talking to him and sketching him at the same time. And I was originally going to apply for the Leicester Prize, which is a really prestigious portrait competition in um, Australia. But I found that as my style developed, I realized that I was an illustrator and I didn't feel like, I don't feel like my work fits into that, that space, that fine art space. So this is me just developing and having a play around. <laughs> and he looks nothing like that, but sometimes it's just used to get, to get to know their features. So, you know, how close the nose is, how far away the eyes are, like his shape, his head isn't completely round. It has like a little point. So it was really, really good for that and just actually getting used to drawing him which can be quite difficult when you know someone as well because you automatically assume their features. Um, yeah, this is a little character de development for Oliver Twist. I've got Fagin there. Um, this is a um, London backstreet. And these are just practicing doing thumbnails as well. And this is a final sketch of my friend George. Um, yeah, I actually used this pose for my final um, painting of him for my exhibition. So yeah, it's very special and important to me. <laughs> Here's a self, tried to do a self portrait of me, but quickly gave up on that. So let's cover that for a sec. <laughs> and these are just really quick, quick sketches, some random bits. I'm trying to teach myself to draw hands. Hands are like, for me, one of the hardest things to do, so. Yeah. And um, again, like I'm, I'm really surprised to see, I knew that I was obviously working a lot with people, like doing people, but yeah, I'm really surprised to see that this book is basically all about portraits. This is a funny one. <laughs> so this is to represent, this was when all the price increases for people's mortgages and rent and everything was going up. And this was like my representation of a the bank, like, this is what I would imagine the bank would look like in human form. And I actually submitted a colour version of this, which was quite extended and exaggerated. And I made the coloured image look quite toad-like. Um, so yeah, so I submitted that to a magazine in the UK, a political magazine. And then we're back to life drawing. I find that the, the three minute poses is where I'm most comfortable. It's where I like it the most, like I enjoy what I create the most because again, you're not really thinking, you're just observing and following the shapes. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you get to like a 10 minute pose, if we've got one here, and I just get, it's just too tight. Um, you get, you know, so bogged down in the details. Um, but yeah. So these are from, I remember doing these, I was in front of the couch and my daughter and my husband were playing a video game, I think, and so yeah, I just stuck the light on and just started um, doing some portrait sketches from some references from Pinterest. Um, 
my daughter doing funny characters. And yeah, so it's just full of everything. Like I said, it's just full of idea gathering and building and just playing around. This is from when I was watching Bridgerton. I've just watched the latest series and I'm gonna completely rewatch it again and do some sketches from that. Yeah, it's really interesting to look back on your work, particularly as this would have, this is probably like six months worth of work in here. Um, and I haven't looked at it in a while. So yeah, it's really, it's really good to see um, what I actually created. And yeah, so there's, what is there? Three pages left. So, ta-da, there is my ugly sketchbook. It's very dear to me. Um, and yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you, I hope it gives you a bit of a boost to see that you don't have to make perfect work all the time. And it's okay to have a sketchbook that you just keep for yourself and where you don't worry about showing anything off. Um, like I said, the stuff that's in here, I haven't worked in this for a while and I'm only really just starting to show it now. And I really like that I kept the majority of what I was doing in here very private because it prevented you from having to worry about comparing yourself to other people or, you know, it just took that, it just lowered so many barriers and just enabled me just to create. So. There is an artist that I follow called Natasha Newton and at the end of every video she chooses a watercolour paint name and she, if people have watched to the end she gets them to type it in the comments and you know what I'm going to try it and I would really love to know if you have listened to the end. Um, It'd be very nice to see exactly how many people are engaging or are listening. So I'm going to choose a very boring name, um, but I'm going to choose Earth Green. It's one of my favourite colours, really. But if you have watched to the end, um, please comment Earth Green and I'll know that at least you've stuck it through with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you've got any suggestions on what else you'd like to see or anything you'd like me to focus on, let me know. I'm like I said, super friendly, very approachable, very open to ideas. Um, if there's anything I can do to help other people along their creative career, I really do want to do that. So yeah, I'll leave it with you for now um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.